I'm Susie, and hopefully you guys uh, would like to hear a little bit about memory, considering we're all college students, right? And uh, especially with his wonderful paper there, goodness, uh, we definitely need better memories. So let's talk about it. Um, are they really ours? Are our memories really ours? Have you ever tried to your hardest to remember something? You're sitting there and you're trying to remember if you turn the stove off or not, right? Okay, the process of the steps of turning off the oven, pushing the switch in your head, and you go over it again. Now wait a minute, what just happened? Did you simply remind yourself of the steps so many times that you convinced yourself you turned off the oven? Or did you actually go turn off the oven? Uh oh, what just happened there, right? Okay, this is a reconstructive process. Our memories, not many people tell you this part, are a reconstructive process. Um, an example of the reconstructive process to consider is that memory of an eyewitness. When being questioned by the police, she's talking to them, trying to remember what she saw, are her memories going to be accurate? We have to consider whether or not the eyewitness's memories have been tampered with, just as if they were a crime scene. Did somebody tamper with that crime scene? Because that's what your memory is when you're an eyewitness. Um, whether or not the eyewitness's memories have been tampered, tampered with. Uh, person she saw pass by the window, did they have a beard or was she told that the suspect was bearded? Okay, you gotta stop and think what's going on, okay? So, let's try to explore our memories, how they're made and how they are reconstructed, then maybe we can try to understand them and the processes and learn to forgive people who have incorrect memories of something you were there for. Your family, for instance. This has happened to me since I wrote this paper. My whole family and I now understand each other a little bit more when someone has a different version of what happened. It's completely okay. We all have a completely different reconstructive process. Whether or not our memories are our own will remain a question that we might someday have answered. Remembering as a reconstructive process uh, normally works well enough for everyday lives. They are general memories that are good enough for the basic story. Reconstructed memory, however, can be distorted. Therefore, it can be problematic. Our general outline, our modeled knowledge of the environment, in other words, what we know must have been outside that day, and our general rules and classes, what we're pretty sure is possible. Did the car float or not? You know, regular things about what we have as rules in our brains. They can work against the actual accuracy of our memory. That our mind puts things in a specific accurate or what we think is accurate class. Reconstructive memory is the process of putting information together based on the stored knowledge, the stuff we already got up there. We know where the car was parked, we know whether or not cars float, right? In the absence of specific memory representation, that's where the problem lies, distortion. Memory is a reconstructive process. Sir Frederick Bartlett did research on remembering. He gives us the idea that there are three kinds of reconstructive processes that are actually happening in our brain as we're trying to remember something. We have leveling, which is how we simplify the story. You ever, been, you ever heard people talk about when you're trying to study that you don't have that much room up there? We don't. This is why your brain does this. Simplifying the story is called leveling. Highlighting and overemphasizing certain details, in other words, the, the ones that are really in your heart, those details. Those are the ones that are called sharpening. Uh, changing the details to better fit your background. It's called assimilating. So we specifically change our memory to fit what's already up in there as far as our class and our idea of what could have or must have happened. Contemporary researchers followed up on Bartlett and they conducted a study of their own. In this study, subjects were asked the exact same question. They were asked if they had ever shaken hands with a TV character at a resort. Some of the subjects had been given an added distortion. Their memory had been tampered with in the form of, of an advertisement. In this advertisement for Disneyland, it clearly described you walking right up and shaking hands with 
Bugs Bunny. Nobody say anything. Your hero. Of the subjects who had, got, who had not been given this distortion, no tampering, only 7% of the subjects say they had ever shaken hands with someone at a resort. Of the subjects given the distortion, given the advertisement saying that they did this, 16% of them said, yeah, I shook Bugs Bunny's hand at Disneyland. How eye-opening this must have been for these subjects. Now, in case you haven't already guessed, none of them were producing accurate memories. Does anybody know why? Bugs Bunny is not a Disney, Bugs Bunny is not a Disney character. This could not have possibly been a memory. And the conclusion, of course, is that actions carried out in the imagination can believe, become believed as our own memories. It's absolutely, positively true. Some people get scared and call this brainwashing, but it's true. Our memories are reconstructed versions of what actually happened based on what our brain put into the class and our imagination pictured us doing. Did we turn off the stove? Another reconstructive uh, memory subject and a recently highly publicized one is eyewitness memory. Post-event information and misinformation have caused inaccurate reconstruction and distortion of eyewitnesses. This caused, and it's been proven and they've been released, innocent people to be unjustly imprisoned. DNA testing has now brought to light the problem with our reconstructive memory and its inaccuracies. A special episode on CBS Eyewitness News, uh, the eyewitness recounts her testimony and she, she remembers everything she'd been told. She remembers being told Good job, that's, that's the person you picked the last time. So when she was sitting there in court and she pointed her finger at the man she believed had done this, she felt so empowered. She was giving eyewitness testimony. Powerful pointing of the finger is what imprisoned him. That pointing causes unexpected strong emotional reaction in all of us that we don't even realize what's going on in our memories, in the memory of the people that are listening to her. A small, slight mis misinformation can be as subtle as a confirmation of her choice of a photograph saying, good job, that's the one you pointed at before, or yes, that's the man you chose last time. Or, yes, that's the exact same woman we found in your neighborhood and arrested. She was being given tampered memories. Memories of hers were being reconstructed. Then began her reconstruction and her alternate alteration of her memory. She did not know that her brain had reconstructed it because she had received reinforcement. She had received tampering to her memory. Our fragile memory and the after the event influences that can come into play after the event inevitably lead to inaccuracies. We must treat it like a crime scene and if you want to hang on to a memory you must do the same. Don't worry, you can do it. Studying, researching, and experiencing the reconstructive process has helped me understand so much more about our memories. They remind me of evolution, and this is exactly how you need to remember your memories. <laughs> remember your memories. Especially when trying to help a child remember something, or your husband remember something, your spouse, your friend. Our memories remind me of evolution in that they are always adapting and changing. They are reconstructing to what serves us best, what serves your heart best, so you can have a happy life. It's reconstructing. You ever heard that you have trouble remembering bad things, but you're supposed to hang on to the good stuff? It's exactly what your brain is up there busy doing. In order to preserve a memory and prevent inaccuracies, we must defend them and stop the reconstruction. We must stop the evolution. I'm only beginning to understand the true importance and the delicate nature of our minds in coding and how we store it and the retrieval of how we call back up those memories. You have to remember to treat it like a crime scene. Keep a diary write it down, keep a photograph. The judgment 
we have given to eyewitnesses in the case of distorted memories. The individuals who me whose memories were reconstructed and put people in prison with post-event inaccuracies, it saddens me greatly now that I understand what happened. Because before I began to study this, I was one of those people persecuting that eyewitness. How dare she point at the man that did not come near her? How dare she point at a man that was in another state that night? What was she thinking? How stupid is she? I had those feelings. I watched that news broadcast. I was thinking, how horrible. Why would she point at somebody who didn't do it? Her memory had been altered and reconstructed. I, I was so upset <coughs> that she was ruining lives in such a way. <coughs> Pardon me. I get a little emotional. Now that I, mm, forgive me guys, now that I understand, it's there, I promise. <coughs> now that I understand memory more, I feel ashamed at how I perceive that eyewitness. We as humans need to acknowledge the incorrect assumption that memory gets better with time. It's absolutely the opposite. Our memory is not durable in its accuracies, it is only durable to the point that it has evolved and it has been reconstructed. Your memories, trust me, have been reconstructed. And I apologize for coughing. Thanks, guys.